If you are anything like me, you thought Stormbreaker Thor was one of the coolest things to come out of Infinity War. The ending of the film showcases the power of this new weapon and what Thor can do with it. In this video, I'm breaking down why Stormbreaker is so powerful and why Thor needed a hammer in the first place. This video will be filled with massive spoilers, so get out of here unless you've seen the movie or you don't care if you're spoiled what is up youtube it's josh this is the den of nerds if you're like me you just can't stop thinking about infinity war so subscribe to this channel because we're gonna be cranking out a ton of avengers content as we head towards avengers 4 on a side note, I still totally think they're going to call it Infinity War Part 2. Now, before we get into this video, I need to shout out Dewey Doohickey. That name's actually kind of hard to say when, you, when you're recording, or maybe it's just me. Anyways, Dewey got the nerd card question correct in my most recent Infinity War video, so shout out to you, Dewey. We'll go ahead and do another nerd card question at the end of this video. One more time, guys, because I gotta be redundant, and even though I am redundant in these videos, everyone still complains about spoilers in the comment section, but guys, there's gonna be spoilers in this video. I literally, like, literally, literally, don't know how else to say it. Like, how else do you say that in a way that it that it gets across? There's going to be spoilers. All right, let's get into this. Thor's new hammer was freaking amazing. Man, that thing was powerful. I mean, at the end of the movie, it goes right through that blast coming from the gun. And it plunges itself into the chest of Thanos. I was shocked when that happened, by the way. I couldn't believe it went through the gauntlet power and it went into Thanos' chest. And for a split second, I, I thought maybe we we're going to Age of Ultron this thing and just kill our villain way too easily and i was like no luckily that did not happen but it doesn't take away from the fact that that hammer is amazing now i am going to explain why the hammer is so strong at the end of the video but first i want to talk about why thor even needs a hammer in general you'll remember in thor ragnarok mjolnir is destroyed and yet a big part of that movie is thor realizing that the power that he used with mjolnir actually comes from him he's able to summon lightning just in his body a lot of craziness it was it was really really cool people talked about it being maybe the odin force or the thor force it was a very cool ability and yet we never see that in infinity war at all and he has to go get the hammer so why is that well where i want to start with this is the fact that a lot of stuff happens off screen i mean when we come in on infinity war all of this damage has already been done thor has already been beaten half of the asgardian people on that ship have already been destroyed so there's a lot that we do not see I would assume that Thor utilized that power, that lightning power, the Thor force power that he has to fight Thanos in the first place. And it was probably just not enough. Now I have to stop here for a second and talk about this huge debate that has been going on online ever since Thor Ragnarok. Some people believe that Thor has actually lost that ability, that he no longer has the ability to summon the lightning just with his body. This is because it says in Thor Ragnarok that Hela gets her power from Asgard same as Thor so Asgard is destroyed at the end of the film and they do that to stop Hela and prevent her from utilizing her power she also notably becomes much stronger once she gets to Asgard and so there's a lot of confusion among fans like what does this mean does Thor lose his power because Asgard is destroyed the same way that Hela did if Asgard is the people and the people are saved doesn't that defeat the purpose of destroying Asgard to stop hella there's a lot of confusion here now my takeaway from this is that asgard itself is more or less tied to the people rather than the place but i do think allowing asgard to be destroyed did affect hella's power and thor's power as well and while i I do think Thor has that ability still. I, I think of it like this. He drains the power out and then he can draw upon the power of Asgard to sort of replenish his, I don't know, Thor power battery or something like that. As noted in the film, Thanos kills half of the Asgardian refugees. And if you didn't notice, this is kind of his thing. He always kills half of the people that he encounters when he's beating them. I mean, that's just his thing. He's about balance. He kills half of them. Thor also can 
confirms this when he's talking to the Guardians of the Galaxy and he says that Thanos killed half of his people. And so what I think is going on here is that Thor uses that power and then gets whooped on by Thanos and because the well from which he draws on to replenish that power is so low because there's so few Asgardians left, he is not able to call upon it to replenish the power that he needs. So even though that's not confirmed, that's sort of my head canon explanation for it. But either way, let's just say he had his full Thor force power and he was whooped on by Thanos before the movie begins, right? In that off screen scene. Well, it would naturally come to Thor that he's not powerful enough with that power to defeat Thanos, and he has to go get more power. So either way, whether or not his power is tied to the Asgardian people or Asgard itself, which was destroyed, either way, he was not strong enough to fight Thanos. So why is Stormbreaker so powerful? I mean, it's just another Asgardian weapon, and yet that thing can stand up against the gauntlet? What's the deal with that? Well, there are a couple of different things at play here, one being the power of the All Fathers. This is something that is said multiple times in the movies. First, Heimdall says, All Fathers, grant me dark magic one more time, which is a kind of a different thing where I'm going to get into in a second. And then, of course, the power of the All Fathers is said to be imbued into Stormbreaker, and the King of the Dwarfs tells this to Thor when they are at the forge and about to make the weapon. Peter Dinklage's character tells Thor that this weapon was a king's weapon, said to be the most powerful weapon in Asgard. Now, if you guys don't realize this, which a lot of the hardcore MCU people do, the Asgardians play a huge role in the galaxy and in the universe. I mean, Odin was keeping so many evil things at bay and keeping his own version of balance and quote unquote taming the nine realms. They are like true gods and these amazing weapons that they were able to wield were created by the dwarfs out of that dying star and similar to the way that the infinity stones work they were using universal powers which could be called science slash magic. So they're using these elements or themes within the universe that are very 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 powerful and the odin force is one of the most powerful things in the marvel universe the mcu always slightly changes things up from the comic but we can assume that the odin force or this power of the all fathers is a similar type of power it is just universally strong and something that exists and can be harnessed into different weapons. So that power that Odin wielded that allowed him to literally tame the nine realms and keep peace among all nine realms, yeah, that power, which I believe was passed down from all father to all father, that power was imbued into Stormbreaker. There is also dark magic or dark energy in Stormbreaker. Dark magic or dark energy is something that has been in the Marvel Cinematic Universe since Avengers 1. One, Loki asks Thor in that movie how much dark energy did the Allfather have to summon to get you here? With the Bifrost gone, how much dark energy did the Allfather have to muster to conjure you here? Your precious Earth. And that is because the Bifrost was destroyed in Thor's solo movie. So in order to teleport Thor to Midgard, Odin had to utilize dark energy. In Infinity War, Heimdall asks the Allfather to grant him the dark magic one more time, and then utilizing it and his sword, he is able to pseudo summon a Bifrost teleportation. That is how he sends the Hulk to Earth. It's even possible that the Bifrost itself is tapping onto dark energy or dark magic. Now, just being real, we don't know too much about what that power actually is, but remember, the King of the Dwarfs tells Thor that theoretically Stormbreaker should be able to summon the Bifrost. This means that whatever that dark energy or dark matter is, it is a part of Stormbreaker as well. So you have the All Father's power, you have the dark energy and dark matter. Basically, this weapon is like Asgard, 
totally concentrated down into a device of war. It is literally one of the strongest weapons in the universe. It is implied that this weapon is somehow on the level of the gauntlet or at least some of the gems. I truly believe that Thanos could have died at the end of that movie. You know how he tells Thor you should have aimed for the head? Well, I think literally if Thor's aim was just a little bit better, he would have killed the Mad Titan and been able to prevent the snap, which of course kills half the life in the universe. Also, just one more little Easter egg that denotes how powerful that hammer was. At the very end of the film, when we see Thanos just relaxing and smiling upon the new universe that he has created, he has used the time stone to heal the wound in his chest. He does not heal the burns on his arm or the fact that the gauntlet is all singed and crackled up, but he does heal that wound in his chest because I think if he didn't, he would have died. So yeah, that hammer, super powerful. So Stormbreaker Thor, which is what the internet is calling Thor now, is going to play a huge role in Avengers 4. I mean, think about it. He'll be able to teleport people around. The weapon itself will be able to stand up against almost anything in the universe, and he will once again be a big gun. I think this is so freaking cool. I mean, we are taking the original Avengers team, and they have somehow found a way to make the big gun a big gun again, even though the stakes have been risen on every level. So that's it, guys. That's my explanation of Stormbreaker Thor, why he is so powerful, and why he needed the hammer in the first place. What do you guys think about it? Is there something else you know about Stormbreaker and you want to bring to my attention? More than willing to learn from you guys in the comment section below. All right, let's check that nerd card really quickly. Stormbreaker is the name of a hammer from the Marvel comics, and there was a different person than Thor that wielded this hammer. So I want to know what character from the comics wielded Stormbreaker? Answer that question in the comment section below. You can click below to watch some more dope videos. You can click our icon to subscribe to get all of our future content. As I always say, I hope you are having an awesome and nerdy day, and I will see you in the next video.